The New York City Refrigeration Engineer's License is required to be a stationary engineer in New York City. Part of the test is a low pressure air conditioning and refrigeration test called the reefer test at times. This test consists of about 125 questions. Today we're going to be going over six of the questions, question and answer, and providing the answers and reasons for such. The first question is, which of the following statements regarding the size of the compressor valve is most accurate? Question A, the suction valve is larger than the discharge valve. B, both valves are the same size. C, the discharge valve is larger than the suction valve. D, valve size is determined by compressive speed. The answer here is A, the suction valve is larger than the discharge valve. Normally, the low pressure vapor gets into the compressor and it's compressed and then push through the small orifice of the discharge valve, which is normally smaller than the suction valve. Question two says, which of the following electrical device can be used to defrost the surface? Resistive element, B, capacitor, C, relay, D, induction coil. Of course the answer for question 2 is A, a resistive element. Answer B, capacitor, of course it stores electricity and that cannot be used to defrost the surface. A relay is used to continue electrical current or voltage to the source. It cannot be used to defrost the surface. And of course, an induction coil, just a coil in the relay, used to energize that relay. Question three. Which of the following best describes the function of the metering device in a refrigeration cycle? A, shutoff valve. B, two-way globe valve. C, pressure reducing valve. D, pressure relief valve. The answer here is C. The metering device in the refrigeration system is designed to reduce the pressure as the liquid enters the evaporator, thus dropping the pressure and temperature, allowing the refrigerant liquid to be able to absorb heat and boil off and complete its process. Thus, the metering device reduces the pressure of the refrigerant liquid. The next question is, question four, what percentage of oil travels through the refrigerant system while it is operating? The answers are A, 10%, B, 40%, C, 30%, D, 50%. The answer is 10%. As the refrigerant travels throughout the air conditioning system, the oil inside the refrigerant used to lubricate the compressor, about 10% travels along with the refrigerant throughout the air conditioning system. Question 5. The low pressure side of an ammonia reciprocating plant extends A. From the expansion valve to the compressor suction B from the king valve to the compressor suction, C, from the expansion valve to the discharge line, D, from the king valve to the discharge line. The answer here is A, from the expansion valve to the compressor suction. The low pressure side of the refrigeration system starts from the expansion valve where the liquid, that is the high pressure, liquid flows into the evaporator. The metering device meters it, slows down the pressure, lowers the pressure and the temperature, thus it becomes a low pressure liquid entering the evaporator. As it enters the evaporator, 
fix with heat, it boils off and becomes a low pressure liquid and return to the compressor. The compressor, of course, compresses it. As it compresses it and pushes it out as a high pressure vapor, then things change. This entire side, from the entering of the evaporator to the entering of the compressor, is the low side of the system, which is what's being referred to here, from the expansion valve to the compressor suction. Question number six. Heat is rejected from a cooling tower when the temperature of the cooling tower water is A. Higher than dry bulb temperature B. Lower than wet bulb temperature C. Equal to the ambient temperature D. Lower than dry bulb temperature The answer of course is A higher than dry bulb temperature. What happens is, as the cooling tower water returns, it picks up heat throughout the building. It returns warmer than the external or dry bulb temperature, which is, which is normal outdoor temperature. What happens is, because it's hotter than the outdoor temperature, outdoor temperature may be, say, um, 80 degree day, now the water coming back from the building picks up heat and it may be 100 degrees or so. Because it's hotter than the air outside, it releases its heat and cools down. So of course the answer is A. It's higher than the dry bulb temperature. Thus it can release that heat. Answer B. Lower than the wet bulb temperature. It's not possible. Let the wet bulb temperature is as low as you get. Nothing's going to be lower than that. Equal to ambient temperature. Not really. If the water coming back is the same as the surrounding temperature, then no heat transfer will take place. It's the exact same temperature. And lastly, lower than dry bulb temperature. Of course not. If the water coming back is lower than the dry bulb or the outdoor temperature, then it's not going to be releasing any heat. The New York City refrigeration exam is a two-part exam, one question and answer, and one practical part. Now it's actually computerized, so both is on the computer. Years ago, we used to have the test, 125 test questions, and then someone else would give the practical. It's a very interesting exam, but with proper study and preparation, it can be passed successfully. This is part two.